Hello and welcome. So this video will show a step-by-step -step guide on enabling SFTP server from an Azure Blob storage endpoint and then connecting to that SFTP endpoint via a namespace with WinSCP. So why would you need an SFTP server? So Secure File Transfer Protocol, SFTP, is a network protocol for securely accessing transferring and managing large files and sensitive data. So most businesses have the need for a secure file transfer system for transferring data and for the ability to connect to an SFTP endpoint securely uh, via SSH using a selection of different clients depending on the application. So it used to be the case where you had to either build a, a virtual machine or a server in, in Azure or on-prem and then install a, an SFTP service on that server, which you then had to patch and manage. Or you could spin up a, an SFTP Azure container instance um, from an Azure template to get a simple SFTP server up and running in Azure. And that was shown in one of my previous videos. So this is an update to that previous video in the Cloud Inspired channel. And now this is much easier where you can create a new blob storage and then simply enable SFTP on that storage by a single click. And then we can create local users in a container and then set permissions for that user. So let's do this by provisioning a, an SFTP server on Azure blob storage and look at the different options available to us for network settings, encryption, and data protection. Enabling the SFTP server endpoint in Azure has an hourly cost together with transaction storage and networking prices for the underlying storage account. Um, so please be aware of this and you'll be charged in your Azure subscription. And these are subject to change via Microsoft for using this service. Known limitations are uh, also worth checking out. Some Microsoft documentation there, links in the description. Um, with known um, unsupported clients, um, preferred client settings, and, uh, and some unsupported operations. Um, and some other limitations such as maximum file upload size um, via the endpoint is 100 gig. As always, please subscribe to the channel to help it grow, like, and comment. Right, let's get started and build an SFTP endpoint. Let's first start by creating our Azure storage and we will create a new resource group for storage to be created in. So give the storage you're creating a name and this has to be unique and not in use. Choose the region and in this case for this demo it's UK South. For lower latency, we could choose premium storage. However, we will leave as standard and recommended for most scenarios, and we are unable to change the storage type later on once created. For redundancy, we will choose local redundant storage or LRS, which will replicate your storage account three times within a single data center in the primary region. On the advanced tab, we will leave all the defaults for API operations, key access, uh, TLS versions, and copy operations. So we need to enable the hierarchical namespace um, to make SFTP visible as an access protocol. Once we enable this, we can then see the enable SFTP option. And we won't enable network file system, which allows your users to share um, files across a network. We are using this blob storage for frequently accessed data. So we will leave the default for the access tier and we won't enable large file shares. Okay, click next. So for network access, we want to allow uh, public access from all networks and Microsoft network routing. We will lock this down to IP address later on in this video, so only specified IP addresses can connect through the firewall to this endpoint, so it's not exposed to the whole public internet. Data recovery to retain deleted blob, container, and file shares data we will leave as the default of seven days. Click next and encryption type we will leave as MMK and support for customer managed keys as default. Infrastructure encryption, which is required as a higher level of encryption can't be enabled or disabled after storage has been created. So you're unable to change this later on. 
So then we click next and we review our settings and we create the storage. Okay, good. So we now have our SFTP storage account created and enabled. So under settings, here is where we can create our local users. So as your blob storage, it doesn't support Microsoft Entra authentication. SFTP utilizes a new form of identity management called local users. And we can authenticate local users connecting via SFTP by uh, using a password or um, a secure shell SSH public private key pair. And we can configure both forms of authentication for connecting local users. We just choose which one to use. However, uh, MFA multi-factor authentication is not supported um, at this time. Okay, so let's go to um, add local user. So here we have the option of an SSH password or a key pair, and we will set the permissions after, and we will create a local user called SFTP user A1. And we won't choose a key pair for this demo, we will choose an SSH password. And this will be created automatically. Um, you can't set the password yourself. Um, so now let's set the permissions for this user in the next section. Okay, so let's create a new container with private no anonymous access. And for permissions, we will choose read write, list, delete, and create. You can set a home directory here too for the user. Um, so the user would connect to that directory when they log in. We won't add a home directory now, um, and then we will copy um, the SSH password automatically created. This will be a, a one-time access, and once the window is closed, you wouldn't be able to access the password again, so you need to copy it now. So let's take a look at network settings now. So we have the ability to select um, virtual networks and IP addresses that we're allowed to connect to the storage. And also we can create private endpoints as well if required. We will also lock this down to a, a client IP address now. So only specified IP addresses can connect through the firewall to this endpoint. So it's not exposed to the whole public internet. For infrastructure encryption, we can't uh, enable or disable this after the storage account has been created. Azure Storage automatically encrypts all data in the storage account at the service level, and it uses 256-bit AES um, with GCM mode encryption. It's one of the strongest block ciphers available. It's also FIPS 142 compliant as well. Customers who require a higher level um, of assurance that their data is secure can also enable 256-bit AES with CBC encryption at the storage infrastructure level for double encryption. But as stated, this needs to be done when the storage account is being created. When the storage was created, we chose seven days for data protection, and we can change the number of days here um, for data protection on blobs and containers. We can change the anonymous access, key access, TLS versions, copy operations, and the storage access tier here. And we can also um, enable large files if required, once the storage has been created. Okay, good, right. So let's now connect on port 22 to our storage with the Win SCP client. So first off, let's copy the connection string and enter our container name, which in this case is SFTP container. Um, and in the string for our username, it's SFTP user 01. click login and then paste the password copied earlier and then we can copy a test file over to our new SFTP enabled storage. If we drill into the storage browser within the portal we can see our test file has been uploaded.
In the activity logs, we can see recent activity and events initiated by each user. And we can enable DIAX to send log analytics um, and then query the logs here for SFTP container. OK, there we have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and comment and see you all soon. Many thanks. Bye for now.